Okay, this video is going to tell you how to show you how to do a modified grub so that you can make it so that it uses the last OS that you ran. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch file manager and uh, there are other ways to do it. There are terminal ways to do it. I'm going to do it with GUI. So we're going to launch a file manager with root privileges. Nemo is the primary one for Linux Mint that I'm running here. But Nemo has a way to open any directory with root privileges. So it would be kind of redundant to show it with Nemo. Instead I'm going to show it with Thunar, which is a very popular, I believe XFCE or is it LXDE uses it. Um, it's a fairly popular file manager. Nautilus is another one. Kaja, is that how you pronounce it? C-A-J-A -A is another. Conqueror with a K in KDE and Plasma desktop environments that uses Conqueror. Uh, what's another one? Dolphin. So there's a bunch out there. If you're not sure what yours uses, uh, let me know what desktop environment you use and what distro you're using and I should be able to tell you which one you're using in comments. So I'm going to use Thunar. Uh, some file managers, rather than having a file system, will have in other locations. In which case you'll, you'll click on the other locations and you click on computer to get to the, to the main file system. I sometimes referred to as the root file system. And then you're going to go to ETC, and then you're going to go to default. Now you're going to do grub. Grub is the file we're going to change. First thing I did was make a copy of it. In fact, I made two copies of it. Grub back and grub back, copy back. So if you look at this one, this was the original. These first three lines, grub default equals zero. That means use the first OS. It starts counting from zero. So the very first one at the top is zero. If you wanted to use the third one or the fifth one, because the second one is always the advanced thing, um, so if you wanted to use the third one, you would say grub default equal two. Zero, one, two. The third one is two. Um, and that's a legitimate way to do it. But if you ever change it to default to that one, that's one way to do it. I prefer the way I'm going to do it because the last one you did is the one that it's going to do next. And and that's more typical about how, how we do things. We find one we like and we use that one the most, but occasionally one we want to use the others. And the way we're going to do it here doesn't matter what the line number is. Uh, th these two here, hidden timeout and him, hidden timeout, quiet equal true. I don't believe these are even supported anymore. At least one of them is not, because it'll give you an error message. The grub timeout, 10 seconds. You can change that. You can lower it. You're going to leave these two alone. Okay. So we're going to open. The new one, which has my modifications, I got, I changed the default to saved instead of zero, and grub save default is on, and then I turned these two off. 
I turned them off by putting a pound sign in front of them. Pound says what follows is a comment. Don't do anything with it. So if you're simply putting a pound sign in front of it, it turns it off. Doesn't get rid of it, but it turns it off. This way if you want to go back to it. I, I don't need 10 seconds. 7 seconds works for me. Uh, and then as you see I left everything else alone. The other thing I changed here is I changed the GFX mode. I have a rather large screen. You can default it to make, you can change this one and make it 640 by 480. That works pretty good on laptop screens. Um, I have a 28 inch screen, the 800 by 600 makes it large enough and readable enough. The default is kind of tiny. And I had a hard time reading it with these old eyes. Okay. Now, I added two lines that are not in the original and they're commented out but they're there in case I ever want to do them so that I know what they are and I'll put this in the comment section if you want this is one way to add a background picture to grub now it allows you to use JPG the problem with using JPG is it's often too large or too many colors for grub to handle at that time PNG is a much better file format to use. And I'm going to, you can, you can put PNG in here, you can put, I believe, BMP as well. Um, <coughs> but I'm going to show you a different way to do it that I prefer. Because it makes it easier to change without having to modify this file every time. Alright, so, here are the changes. And I'll put these the save default equal true and the default equal saved and I'll put those in the comment section now whenever you make changes to the grub the grub configuration file there you have to update grub most Ubuntu most Ubuntu and let me open a second window here most Ubuntu and most Debian packages nowadays use update grub uh, there are a few like I believe Solus and some of the Arch don't use that. There's another way to do it. You'll, you'll need to look up how to update your grub configuration file if you use one of those. But if you're using anything Ubuntu based, this will do. Okay, so that's going to update it. And now, the changes that were made will take place. If I had made any changes. They'll have made changes and they'll take place. Um, found a background image. Now I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to go back here and we're going to go up, back up, back up, and we're going to go to boot. And in boot, you'll see a grub. Okay? I have some pictures in Grub. LXDE, ZGrub1, and Z Fedora 16 Just happen to be some files I like. Yeah, that makes a pretty good uh, background for Grub. I like it occasionally. This one too. I like it occasionally. This is the one I'm running right now. This is what shows in the background. It's pretty simple. It's blue. But it's a 
a little bit of a contrast from the plain black. There is a way, but it's a bit of bit complicated to change the character color in Grub. Its default is white on black. And I find it difficult and I don't like messing with it. It's in a file in grub.d that gets made automatically. So I don't like messing with those files, but there is a way to change that color. I don't mess with it. Instead, I find background pictures such as this that the white characters will still look good on. This one, iffy with the white, but because the characters are mostly going to be over here, I can read most of what it is. This one works really good because the lighter colors are all the way at the edge and they're not going to conflict with the white characters in the font. So you want to think about that when you're picking a background picture. Now, I got three in there. Two of them have a Z at the beginning of their name. That's because this picks it alphabetically. So if I want to change and use a different one of these that I've copied in from my, my pictures, what I need to do is just rename this and I'll put a Z in front of it. This is the one I want to use instead, and I'll rename this, and I'll get rid of that Z, so that alphabetically, this is the first one it sees. Okay. So, now, if I go to... And I do a sudo grub, update grub. And I update that. It found this background image. Okay. See, so you found lots of Linux mint kernels. I've done another video on how to get rid of some of these. This is, this is plenty, maybe more than I need. Um, for uh, backup kernels, but if this list starts getting longer, look at my video on how to, in Linux Mint, how to get rid of some of those. Okay, so that's it, not much to it.